Okay, this is a response to the Backwoods uh, question about what is my take on the fall of man in chapter 3 of Genesis, or chapter, yeah, chapter 3 of Genesis. Um, so before I say anything about it, let me preface it by saying I've never been to seminary. Um, I've read the Bible quite a bit. I've gone to church quite a bit, uh, but I'm not an ordained minister. I don't have an education in this. Um, and so don't, please don't take my words as, as being hundred percent true. I think I'm right about certain things, but probably wrong about other things. And so my final answer is to do your own research, but I'll give you my, my take as you asked. This is my take on it. Um, the fall of man in Genesis chapter three, uh, is about Adam and Eve and they were in the garden and the garden was for all intents and purposes the garden was perfect meaning that there was no shame there was no sin there was no lust there was no whatever um it was an age of innocence for man how long did it last we don't know right <laughs> it doesn't say um, three days after God created man and woman, they, they did this thing. It doesn't say three years. It doesn't say a thousand years. So um, there was no death. There was no pain, nothing before this happened. And what I find interesting about it is that the tree isn't necessarily what you would think it would be. It might, you would think like if you were just making the story up, you would be like the tree of tree of evil or something like that, or the tree of lust or the tree of greed or some something evil about the tree that was too tempting and the man just had to check it out. But it was a tree of knowledge. And I think that's very interesting. It's not just the knowledge of evil, it's the knowledge of good and evil. And that, in my opinion, is very profound because if you have a child, if you have an infant child, that infant does not have the knowledge of good and evil. That, that child just knows that when I'm hungry, I cry. Uh, when I'm happy, I laugh. Uh, when I'm tired, I sleep. Um, now, the child does learn pretty quickly to manipulate people and, and to fake certain things and stuff like that. But um, in the age of innocence, which I don't know how long that lasts in a human's life, there is no knowledge of good and evil. It's just, you know, you almost take it like a, like an animal walking through the forest, right? An animal walks through the forest, doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have a conscience, right? You have a mama bear and a baby bear, and if a human gets in between mama bear and baby bear... The, the the mama bear just attacks and kills the human and and uh, the mama bear does not regret it later on. The mama bear doesn't feel bad. The mama bear doesn't second guess her decision. Maybe I should have let him go. Maybe I should have just maimed him instead of killed him. Maybe I should have just done this or that. Or he probably wasn't going to do anything to my baby, so I sh probably should have just left him alone. You know, blah, blah, blah. Animals don't have those thoughts animals don't think about what i did was good or what i did was bad animals just act on instinct so from an evolutionist point of view let's say that you're in let's say that you believe in god but you're also an evolutionist where which there actually are plenty of people who hold both of those beliefs i think a lot of people in the catholic church do and say that man rose up from apes man was a caveman uh he didn't have much of a cerebral cortex for for thousands of years probably tens of thousands of years he didn't have hardly any of a cerebral cortex so he couldn't think on deep levels so man acted on instinct then and man just did whatever he wanted to do so man um if you believe in this man used the earth for whatever his purposes were and then when his life was over he everything he got from the earth he gave back to the earth including his body um now man has got this knowledge 
that, hey, we can become rich and we can manipulate the environment um, to, to serve us, even though it hurts the animals and it hurts other people. Um, we can go to war. We can take things from other people. That hurts other people, but it helps us. And so there's this, um, there's this elevated knowledge that modern man has compared to, um, say, the caveman era, where there wasn't much of a cerebral cortex. You could almost say that Genesis 3 is an explanation of how man evolved into a being who could be selfish and childish and evil and greedy and lustful. Um, animals do attack other animals, but it's usually over territory and it's usually over fear. Um, human beings attack other human beings because they try to, because they want to rape women, because they want to plunder and steal property from other people. Like, Nowadays, you can get rich by being a capitalist, but back in the, you know, even 300 years ago, maybe four or 500 years ago, like go back to the Middle Ages, the only way that you could really get rich is by stealing property from other people, you know, because you spend your whole life uh, tending your flock and farming your field and building your house, and that's all, like you put a hundred percent of your effort into just building your own, your own life, and you're not rich. You're just you're just getting by, right? So what's the best way to double your wealth in a very short period of time? It's to go to the next village and attack them and just take all their shit, right? Take all their food, take all their tools, take all their women, kill all the men, and now. You didn't have to work for any of that stuff. You just stole it. So um, that's what man, that, that's what the fall of man was. Now, um, I have friends who believe that there was literally a Garden of Eden somewhere on the earth and we never found it. I think that's kind of preposterous. Um, there... There are people who take it literally that there literally was a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil and that Eve took some of the fruit and ate it and gave some of it to Adam and he ate it and their eyes were opened. And um, But if you really, if you really look at the overall story, it's more of man's awakening. Man woke up and became self-aware. Um, when I see these birds flying outside and I see, um, other wildlife, I don't know how self-aware they really are. And I know that they act hundred percent on, on instinct. You know, they have the fear instinct. They have the, um, hunting for food instinct. Um, they, they have the instinct to protect their young. They have these instincts, but animals don't rationalize anything. They don't. They don't weigh their options and say, well, you know what? We could do this or we could do that. And then they sit there and think about it. Well, maybe I'll do it. Because then you would have some animals act, behave some way and other animals behave other way. And I'm talking about within the same species. Like you don't have some bears, some grizzly bears that attack people when, when they get in between the, the mother and the child and other grizzly bears that just decide not to. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hardwired into them. So um, that's my take is that uh, um, man got to a level of awareness and that was his fall. And the next level, if you will, is even though you're aware of good and evil, that you don't use the evil and you just use the good. So when you talk about, you know, 666 or God's number is seven, Satan's number is six. You could almost put it in a, put it in a category of like before man awoke to the knowledge of good and evil, maybe he was at a five. He was just with all the other animals. And then slowly 
he came into a level of awareness like, wow, I could actually do some serious damage that would help me, but hurt other people. And that brought him up to a level. But then we still have more evolving to do, which is to go up to the seventh level, which is to be perfect. Um, to have the knowledge of good and evil, uh, but to know, to know that evil is only going to end up not just bad for other people, but also bad for us. Um, so that's kind of a very broad, wide kind of view of it. But to me, that makes a lot more sense than two naked people running around eating a fruit, like even though God told them not to and a serpent told them to, whatever. Um, I think a lot of that is heavily symbolic. That's what I think.